Now then, welcome back to another episode of Mechanism. Man, oh man, oh man. Welcome back to another episode of Avan 3 on the FTOG server. Today, more Mechanism. Or processing. Or, or processing. Or processing. That's what I meant to say. Or processing. More Mechanism today. More Mechanism. I have been busy, busy, busy over here setting up the ore processing factory. Uh, you can see we've got some bits and pieces all sorted that you were expecting to see from last time. This is not an enrichment chamber, and uh, Walia, this is an energized smelter for smelting up the stuff. Now, as an immediate solution, I can put ore straight into here. This is tier zero, single ore processing. So the ore goes in, it smelts out just the same as a furnace, only it uses electric. Bada bing. There we go. That's all you need to worry about, right? That's a start. Uh, over this side, we've already dealt with all this enriching factory for all the other bits and pieces, the cool stuff. Um, we've got coal over this side now because I wanted to do this thing with the power cables coming over the top. I'm planning on sealing all of these in so you can't see them. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna show you that. Well, the covers. You've probably seen all the covers before. But I'm going to use the covers to seal them in. Uh, I've got two here right now. I'm going to just make uh, another load here while we're waiting and stick them in there. That's that. Okay. Put those in there and take these out. Good, good. Conduct facades. I'm going to be using those to tidy the place up and hide most of the wires and stuff as we progress. Uh, but I wanted to show you this stuff first, right, before I sealed them in and hid them away. That That's where the power is going now. And I want to do there as well. We've got the items coming into this from the top there. Uh huh. I don't need it that high. And we've got the power coming into there like that. So, yeah, I don't need that. Let's take that back. There we go. I take that back. Didn't need it. Okay, so this room is going to start looking a much better. I'm still keeping this wall for more processing of something else. I don't necessarily know what yet. And I've got two more spaces on this side for compressing drawers and one more space on this side for a comp compacting drawer. Compacting drawer, not compressing drawer. Uh, if I want to. And then I can fill this in with something else as well. I don't know what that's going to be yet. It may be that it's white or it may be that it's something completely different. <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, that gets all sorted out. So that's what I've been doing there. Also, I've made all of the mechanism machines for five-tier processing. And I've started creating the ore processing plant. Yes, it's uh, it's it's quite cool looking. I like it. We've got factory blocks doing lots and lots of uh, making the place look like a factory. Yes, uh, we've got the pillars going all through evenly, and that gives us a stairwell down. I'll probably either change these four actual stair blocks, or chisel and bits them out to make stairs, so that I can come down a set of stairs down here. And also there's a set of stairs going down into the basement area, which I will link to the ground floor there. So there'll be two ways into it and quick way back up onto here. So this will be an enclosed corridor, but I'll be able to come down the, from the enclosed corridor this side, down again, and then into the enclosed corridor on the bottom here. Yeah, so I'll be able to do some moving around still. Uh, so that's that's the general gist of how I'm laying it out. And I decided to use this factory block to place machines on and so on this side I've laid out the five times or processing system so tier zero is just straight into the uh, the smelter over there smelting up the goods right one for one if I put the ore in the enriching factory first it enriches it into a dust and then sends it that way I believe that's right a dust maybe it's a dust Maybe it's a dust, maybe it's something else. Um, but that process is out that way, okay? Uh, and that's tier one processing. Tier two processing, we've got clumps and dirty dust. So we make clumps in the purification chamber, and then the purification chamber crushes those clumps to make dirty dust, and the dirty dust then goes into here, gets purified or enriched, and then the dust gets sent out into the smelter to smelt. Easy enough. Power just coming in from the top. Easy enough. Uh, this one here, this one needs oxygen. And oxygen, of course, H2O is split between the uh, the electrolyte 
lactic separator, which separates the hydrogen and oxygen from water. Uh, water just feeding in here and the uh, oxygen heading off that way. I've got it set up so hydrogen goes that way for the next process. And that's pretty much where we were at the end of last episode, I believe. Now I've got all of this section sorted out and there's still more to do. Uh, so the system for five times, what was that? That was uh, one, two, that's doubling, that's tripling, then this is quadrupling the shards. The shards themselves quadruple. So you put ores in here, it mixes it with hydrogen chloride and then turns it into uh, shards. Those shards go off it to become clumps, dirty dust, dust again, so on, so on, so on. So it uh, multiplies it by four. To get the shard sorted out, we need some mix of hydrogen chloride. To make hydrogen chloride, I need the hydrogen from the uh, oxygen, hydrogen, H2O water mix, which is awesome. Got lots of it. Easy to sort out, easy to process. And I also need some chlorine. I got chlorine coming in from this machine here. Chlorine. Now, chlorine and hydrogen make hydrogen chloride. So then that can go into the machine in front and process the uh, ores, right? Getting the brine has been the problem. This massive thing here, this massive, massive block here, this thermal evaporation tank is a multi-block structure. It's currently the height of seven. Um, it receives water in one side, heats the water up, makes the water evaporate, leaving only brine. It's a four by four structure. It needs to be a minimum of three blocks high with a gap in the center. I don't know if I've got a way to get up to the center to show you. Let's go up this way and I'll show you inside. Yeah, you can just about, um, okay, I can't get in that way. I've got wires and pipes everywhere now. Let's jump over here, right. So yeah, it goes inside. There's a two by two hole down the center. It's hollow in the center with a four by four base. Uh, uh, we can go in this way. I forgot that hole was still there. And this way. <clears throat> so yeah, the brine side of things is the thing I'm working on at the minute. Uh, to get brine into here, to make sodium and brine may turn into the thing. Brine, brine separates, that's right. Brine separates into sodium and chlorine. Sodium and chlorine. The chlorine then gets emptied out into this one here adds to the hydrogen to make the hydrogen chloride. That's what I mean to say. So the brine needs to come in here. Now, this big block thing has a temperature gauge, right? And when I did it just the basic three high, the temperature was 316 something or other, right? With a height of three. I added uh, one, two, three, four more rows on and didn't increase the production of brine very well. Also, I've got another little problem that um, when it's all connected and pumping out, right, we get it like so, that's perfect, but it's producing slower than it actually is used. So I'm using brine a lot faster than I'm producing it. So I need a few of these for a start. But also when it runs out and it stops pumping, I get um, a kind of a flashing light effect, which gives me a, a frame rate issue that it's not even frame rate because my frame rate stays sort of maintains itself. It's more of a, a stuttering that happens. And it's a lighting glitch by the seams of it. Because once the the fluid is all gone, the lighting glitch starts to happen. Now, as there's brine in here at the minute being processed for chlorine, all of this is kind of backlogging. This nice little purple liquid here is going into there. And this is processing 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 it's not using it so i'm not getting rid of it at all but it's processing faster than it can receive the brine and that causes a flashing light so as you can see this is bright uh or this is dark and then once this fills up it becomes light again and as this starts flashing we have a problem when it's flashing like this, we have a flashing light in and out. And, oh, there we go. Now, now the stuttering happens. My frame rate doesn't actually change, but you can see 
the stuttering as the lighting updates. It constantly keeps making a lighting update. Now, I'm not sure whether it's the pipe, because I've tried this and I've tried the Ender IO fluid conduits, but I think it's the actual blocks, the actual thermal evaporation multi-block structure is flickering on and off as it's got something in and not got something in. You can see the lighting glitches and that's causing a stuttering effect. So I've been taken to turning it off, letting it build up instead of just letting it run on empty and just producing, uh, what does it say, producing there? 0 0.76 millibuckets per tick. Um, so not even a full millibucket per tick can go into here, which is really slow. So that is a problem that I've come up against and a problem that I wanted to solve before moving on to the next stage. Um, on the five times ore processing, there's only actually three more machines. Uh, the first machine is the most important one. That is the something desolution chamber. You put the ore in and you put some sulfuric acid in. Uh, the sulfuric acid takes a few machines that I've got left here, these few machines that I've got left here, to create the sulfuric acid to melt down the ore into an ore slurry. Then the ore slurry gets sent over to this machine, which requires water, and the water is coming in there. It can only come into the machine through the top for some reason. It's uh, one of them machines. So then the ore slurry comes in here and gets cleaned by water until it's a clean slurry. Clean slurry then travels across to here. The clean slurry fills up and gets crystallized. Uh, and then the crystals get a put across to here, made uh, messed about with the chlor uh, hydrogen chloride, turned into shards, and then the shards carry on their journey through here. So it ends up being uh, five crystals per ore block, I would guess, to make it a five times ore processing. Five crystals per block of ore, and then five shards go through, and then five clumps, and then five dust, dirty dust, and then five dust, and then five... Uh, just go into the energy smelter to make five times so the sulfuric acid stuff needs to be created and come into this side here so I'm ready to do that kind of thing down here somewhere ready to do it down here but as yet I haven't made that move because I can't get my brine production to be up uh, good enough so I wanted to quickly show you a bit of experimentation because these these blocks are quite expensive uh, let me show you the recipe of these blocks they are a steel ingot, four steel ingots and a copper ingot. Why it shows up with double steel, two every time, I don't know. But it's one steel ingot and one copper ingot, or well, four steel ingots and one copper ingot makes four blocks. So steel, four steel makes four blocks, which is okay, I suppose. It's okay, I suppose. But the steel, as I showed you in a previous episode, has got quite a processing, it's got quite processing to make steel, which is annoying in itself the processing of steel uh, and for what I've seen um, or what I've what I've figured out myself if we take a, a good long look at this for a second right let's get let's get this off if we take a good long look at this a second the temperature for a height of seven the temperature is 319.65 with a production of 0.76 right now pressing E to get out of there now, if I break this block, it all resets, okay? So it starts again, and it builds up power, okay? And it starts taking on water again, it starts making brine again and all that. So I lose all the uh, current production, but I'm not too fussed about that, right? It's a three block high maximum, so if I take these out uh, all along here, let me stand on so this is a bit quicker. If I take all of these out and reassemble the multi-block structure, I'll be in a, an only three high structure. Uh, you've got to get every last single block out. You can't leave any blocks, otherwise it fails to associate itself with a multi-block structure. Right, stick this in. And it will be a height of three, which is okay. Fills up with water quickly enough. It'll start making brine very, very slowly, the production rate. But the temperature rises. Now, in previous versions, I found out it needed um, solar panels on the top of this in all the corners. Um and I started making solar panels. I'll leave that warming up while I show you. I started making the solar panels thinking I needed it. And then I read a little bit on the wiki and realized that the newest version does not require the solar panels. So I started making these solars, right? These advanced solars require four solar generators each. And I needed four of these. 
The solar panels all need solar panels here and energy tablets. Energy tablets, um, the recipe for energy tablets needs lots of gold and some more rich alloy. It, it was just quite potentially ridiculous, the amount of stuff that we're going to need to make all of those. But I was starting to process them while I was reading the wiki. And while they were processing uh, things like the enriched iron alloy, uh, I was checking it out. And I realized halfway through making them, or well, less than halfway through making them all, that I didn't actually need them. So, sigh of relief and all that. Not too bad. Uh, I do have some steel processing, I believe. Steel dust there, yeah. And I stick that into here and off we go so I've been smelting the steel and the steel's been coming into here like this steel ingots but it's immersive engineering steel ingots still works the same don't worry and I've had my iron and coal going through this metallurgic infuser to make the uh, iron dust and then the iron dust and coal going through here to make the steel dust and then the steel dust comes into here which is why I've got so much of it over here now and then generates another movement over here to do this it's all very manual but it is engineering once i've made the blocks i don't need the blocks anymore so i'm engineering what i need as i need for these thermal uh thermal thingies for <laughs> thermal evaporation blocks right so i'm making them as i need them i'm going to make a lot more because i believe that the bigger you make it the it just doesn't make productivity sense it doesn't make sense productivity wise if we come over and have a look at it again now it's been running for a little while hopefully it's back up to temperature if we can get into it there we go so yeah it is now at 319.65 so it's exactly the same temperature right with a height but it's 0.33 millibuckets per tick okay so we've gone Let's say the 75, was it 75, 76? I can't really remember. But it's it's a little below half the production that it was on before for taking out four more layers. So each layer only adds a little bit on. So making four more layers adds us up to uh, just enough production just enough production to to keep it ticking over so i'm gonna to need tons of this brine stuff made i'm gonna need tons of these so i was thinking do i make uh i'm stuck on something do i make great big top to bottom of the ship brine making things they do look pretty cool because they look like great big things like this or do i come back over here somewhere uh, because of the lighting glitch, because of the lighting glitch, I'm thinking if I completely encase them in blocks, then there will be no lighting effect to glitch on me. So I was thinking maybe, uh, for a start, I was thinking of putting them all in the roof and just having like these uh, these little tower bits coming out, almost like a, an engine showing up. I remember this part is supposed to be the engine, and there's some engines on the very back as well. Just brine tanks sticking out all over the place. I was thinking about it. Like mass producing the brine tanks so I can make lots and lots of brine and send them all via some magical liquid teleporter to bring them in to this final little system bit here and push them straight in. So that this room then doesn't have all the tanks showing. I kind of like the tank showing though. I did like the tank showing but the tank just doesn't produce fast enough. I've got some more levels down below that I can uh, add them in because I was thinking uh, they're 4x4 four four, so I could bring them into here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So with this wall taken out and part of it and this wall taken out and part of it, that would be 9. Meaning I'd have a route down the middle for putting the water in to both tanks and all that and have these walls all part of the thing. I mean, these do come out slightly, so I could kind of bring them down even more. But I could have two either side there, and maybe two either side there, and maybe even two either side far over there as well, because it's all kind of in the same ore processing section, because it's not really showing up anything over here. I'm not doing anything with this section here. 
and the section behind here I'm not doing anything with this yet either so it might be worth building eight uh, yeah four on that side and four on that side great big brine production facilities that poke through almost the whole of the ship and then teleport the liquid over to here uh, and I've got a plan for that as well there's a an ender bucket uh, or ender ender buckets yeah these things ender buckets have uh, ender tanks there we go ender tanks there's also the ender storage ender tanks as well which are yeah, they, this is a good substitute for them and these have ender chests whereas the ender tanks don't have ender tanks as such uh yeah and the ender storage has a code a color code of three colors whereas these are all solid colors it seems over here i think you can change the colors but i'm not sure the the whole ender tanks mod is replaced just simply by the original ender storage mod and it does so much more just in two simple blocks yeah so this is probably not something that we're going to use i'm probably just going to use the end of storage um it depends on how much they can pump i suppose and that is a thousand rf in a turbine generator that's not what i'm looking at i was trying to figure out how much it would actually pump around but i guess i'll figure that bit out next um, so I need to get the brine situation all sorted out first. So I've got a nice constant flow of brine into this section here. So that this is all going to be operational fast. And then I've got this space under here. And this space at the end of this sort of room here. To create the sulfuric acid using these things. Which we'll get back to in just a little bit. Well alrighty then. So... What have we got done over here? Well, I put a back wall in. I put a back wall in, put a ceiling on, just to shape the room off so I can see how it's looking. Not that this is how I want to finish it. I want to do a little bit more crafting of dirty looking factory blocks. But for now, this will do serve the purpose of showing me where's what and who's doing what and things. Uh, since the last clip... I have had all of this set up running for a little while. I've got the the things behind there still. So they're, they're still here. Thermal evaporation blocks. But now I've got two of them. I also put a fan just there because it looked awesome. It fitted perfectly as well on those particular points. It doesn't fit next in this particular point because it's a tiled, a tiled texture. Uh, and so I've got two fairly equal size get running up the center there and we've got um an ender tank with brine coming out of the two of them and we've got water going into the two of them so that's all set up and i can set up multiple of those around because i've got uh well potentially two four six more of them that i can place if i need them um and then the tank comes out here and goes straight into where it's supposed to go to fill this thing up to break into sodium and chlorine everything's had chance to back up now everything's had overnight chance to back up and everything's running smoothly uh, but obviously i'm not putting anything into the system right now because i'm doing this last little section where i want to make the ore slurry in order to do that i need to put the sulfuric acid in here to devote to make the, the the ore process into ore slurry and then move it along i have had it running just from this stage onwards overnight as well and the oxygen seems to have been keeping up i don't know what's going to keep up and what's going to fall by the wayside at the minute uh, but hydrogen chloride should be coming out of there oh, i haven't got any aha i think i've got a an issue with a pipe here because that chlorine is coming in but this is not showing it aha okay yeah when i was changing these pipes around earlier i put a pipe here and i put a pipe there to go down and it connected to that instantly so it must have brought the chlorine this way instead of what i want it to go, do is go into there and then bring this product this way hydrochlorine and go down there as well so either that or i haven't created enough uh i don't think it's not creating i think i must just have had the pipes connected just once down here i've got another little setup this is where the hydrogen chlorine uh, chloride needs to come down into 
and at the moment it's got none in so it's not producing any at all up there so I've got to fix that um, but this is the final kind of setup this and um, was it this one or this one this thing here this final uh, infuser is supposed to produce the sulfur is it is it I don't know chemical injectors the start of the process uh, this is the end of the process the rope yeah yeah, uh, this is the end of the process here. This here infuser is supposed to make this sulfuric acid. To make the sulfuric acid, it needs water vapor and also sulfur trioxide. Okay, and then I presume I'm going to pump it out the front because I'll pump that in that side, I'll pump that in that side. So this will come out the front. It will run along here and go up into that there. Or I might do another little tank, an ender tank thing to bring it across there so it doesn't have cables all the way around here. But that's the out output first. To get the water vapour in there, we've got to put water in a rotary condenser on decondensing. And it goes in the right hand side, which I found out, to decondense into water vapour. So the water's just coming down from upstairs, just come down into that side decondenses into water vapor goes straight into there on this side then the sulfur trioxide which comes from here which is an infusion of oxygen so the oxygen's coming down and going in that side and whatever that's supposed to be <laughs> i need to fix that quick uh, i did have it all worked out it was all running but then this one cable here has messed me up so i need to reattach this cable because it's currently got hydrogen chloride in. That'll be a thing. A thing I don't want. Uh, I've still got one little bit to deal with. Uh, but this should be working now. So that should then go into there. And the hydrogen chloride is still not being made. Chlorine is going across. Hydrogen chloride should be being made. Um, Houston, we have a problem. I have another problem here. That chlorine should be going this way. This should be chlorine going across. But I can't tell if it's working or not. It looks like it's working, but it's not physically going into there. Hydrogen, chlorine. Ah, oh, because I've got that in the tank there. Okay, can I. How do I empty this out of the tank? How do I pull from this tank here? Because I've got hydrogen chloride in this tank somehow. And I need to pull from there to get it out of that. Do I just break it and replace it? Is that the only way? Mm, dang it. Okay, so uh, give me a minute to figure out how to get this out. I guess there's some kind of... Like dip... Uh, pipette or something something to pull this out so let's see if i can find it ha knew there would be something i worked it out um there's a gauge dropper a dropper in here and uh, i thought it went in here to start off with but no you have to click it on here to take it out and put it into there to dispose of it i don't know how i dispose of it but anyway now i've got the uh, the chlorine coming in this way have i got it yeah chlorine coming in from this side yeah chlorine's coming in from this side coming across and mixing with the hydrogen from that side to make uh hydrogen chloride which is now going down the pipe going down into there also going forwards into this one here this chemical injection chamber there so we've got those working this chemical injection chamber is also receiving the hydrogen chloride so i don't know if i'm producing enough hydrogen chloride to keep up with these things but it does seem to be increasing rather than decreasing all right so yeah i think i think that works okay so this makes uh sulfur from gunpowder using hydrogen chloride it makes sulfur the sulfur then goes into the chemical oxidizer the sulfur dust and gets turned into something sulfurish <laughs> sulfurish which goes into this side of this chamber sulfurish please show me sulfurish sulfur sulfur dioxide that's it then the sulfur dioxide gets mixed with oxygen to make the uh sulfur trioxide 
and then the sulfur trioxide and water vapor make sulfuric acid and the sulfuric acid then's got to come out to there right so the bit that i'm missing at the minute is making gunpowder now i could do a mob farm i could do a mob farm but there is a mechanic mechanism way of making gunpowder and it is going to give me that there output input i'll take those off make the input this side and get rid of that as well output on that side we'll have it on auto eject please there we go so in a crusher if you put flint in a crusher it turns flint into gunpowder surprisingly enough i don't know how flint into gunpowder works but yep yeah, there you go look flint into gunpowder right and this one should be able to then accept an input from that side so the flint goes through the crusher into gunpowder the gunpowder then goes into here to make sulfur dust and so on it carries on through the process until we end up with the sulfuric acid to come and start our process but how do we make flint well there's numerous ways of making flint i'm just going to go with a very simple crafter i think because um making a making a whole setup just to make gravel is not a thing that i want to do so i'm planning on just filling this full of gravel here and using a little crafting recipe like so which is three flint makes gravel and i believe that's another another mod that's giving me that but we'll do that and then this goes into here so i could just feed flint into here now where i'm going to feed the flint in from i don't know i've got um let me jump I've got this here, right? I've got this here. So when flint comes in here, I could take it out and put it into here first. That's an option. And then excess stock goes into the barrels over there to be stored. I don't know. But either way, this now needs to uh, kind of auto eject. Uh, remember the current items, natural butter. Remember to forget the layout. This one should input from there. I don't think it's pulling though no it's not I forget numbered outlay so result of the crafting operation will go into the output buffer yes all items in input are consumed yes uh, will stay in the input buffer. Uh, results of the crafting operation will go into the output buffer um, yeah. okay yeah that's it so I just need to either put a hopper upgrade on it or move it across one move it across one and put a pipe a pipe a conduit next to it there uh, put another power cable onto it there and stick that on there so that it automatically pulls out of there and it should pull out of there straight away should in theory that should pull out of there and then insert into there is it all going? Yeah, slowly but surely going. So it'll insert into there from the stockpile of gravel coming into here, turn it into flint, blah de blah de blah. That will then turn into gunpowder. The gunpowder then goes into there to turn into sulfur dust and so on and so on and so on. Until eventually I get this sulfuric acid and figure out how I want to put it into this machine here. Now already we can see that my brine is running out at the current operational speed. So I think more brine is required. That chlorine is going to take a lot out of it in order to make all that. But it is just filling up for the first time. So there may be a little backlog. Uh, these things have run out. Both of them have run out. It's only producing a little bit you see. So we've got to figure that bit out as well next. I may have to build these brine, state, uh, brine thermal evaporation chambers all the way around my ship. It's going to cost a bit, but it's okay. And then, uh, then we should get the brine coming in fast enough to keep up with this minor operation. It's literally that is the minor operation. This little bit here, this chemical injection chamber requires all of the brine in the world to be able to do. But that is it for today's episode. Thank you all very, very much for watching. I have done here. I have got tech. I've technically got five times ore processing. I've just got to finish the final bits of wiring off, and I will be done. Thank you all very much. It's been a a trip. It's been a it's been a journey. It's been a 
It's been a milestone achievement for me. Thank you very much for supporting. Thank you very much for your likes and your comments. I will see you in the next episode of Avant 3 on the FTOG server. Thank <laughs> you.